Uh, I want to tell you uh, what a pleasure it is to be here this evening, uh, to have an opportunity to minister to, uh, to, to the family, uh, to Eve, to Solange, to, to all of the boys. Uh, we do love them dearly at uh, Blur Central. And, and this is an event that is very difficult for us to, to connect with. Uh, my family was all born here in Toronto. Uh, I have my family with me. Uh, I did spend some time living in, in, I spent some time living in Uganda. I also spent some time living in South Africa. Uh, I know what it's like to be a long way away from my family. However, while we were away, we never had a time of loss. There was never a time where we, you know, someone from our family passed on. We were very fortunate in that. And this was always the one issue. My wife and I, for 14 years, we spent on the African continent. This was always the one issue that we, that we did not want to have to deal with. And we were very fortunate that, you know, there was never a time where we actually lost someone that, that was part of our close family. When we came to Bloor Central, I've been there, there for 14 years now, on the west side of Toronto. We had several families from different countries. Even now we have country, uh, many uh, people at our church from different countries. And this is one thing that we've had to deal with on a few occasions, where someone close in the family passes away. And, and this is a time now where many of us we have access to many commu much communication and technology where we can talk to our family across an ocean, across a planet. We can literally see them and, and discuss with them and show them around our house. But when we lose someone, I don't, I don't believe any of the technology can make up for those miles in yes. separation. Yes. And it is at a time like this that I am so grateful for the church of Jesus Christ, yes. that we have all been adopted into God's family, and that it is now in that extended spiritual family that we depend. And this is the time that we have to come to life and to offer support to our brothers, our sisters, and their whole family as they go through this time. I'm also grateful for the scripture at this time. I'm very grateful for the way in which we can turn to scripture when we are afraid, we can find courage. When we are confused, we can find understanding. When we are sick, we can find healing. And when we are hurting, we can find relief as well. We can find comfort. I want to share with you from Psalm 46. I just want to say, uh, share a few verses from Psalm 46. Uh, this is a, a passage that has been so very meaningful to me. It says this in Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of our God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms rise and fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Eve, for you and for Solange, and for all of you who I know have family members, those that are very dear to you, so very far away, I am trusting, I am praying deeply that this passage, Psalm 46, is offering you some sense of comfort and security. The image that we're given of is God is a fortress. Do you know why we need a fortress? Because life is difficult. Mm -hmm. God, doesn't, God doesn't have a stay in a tent he doesn't, he doesn't use the image of a nice little house. The image that we have of God is a fortress because we do face storms and we do face difficulties. Those times when the wind blows and the rain comes down and we're not sure we can actually make it. But the Bible says that we have a fortress. He is God. He is ever present. We know that that presence isn't just across time. It's not just 
every moment of our day, but it's wherever we are. And I know that as some of you have come from faraway countries and you're living in a place that, that you did not grow, you are not exiles. Exiles are people who, who have been forced from their home and they are, not, they, they, they are living in a place that is not their own. I am so grateful that we have a spiritual family that says, this is your home. It is the church of Jesus Christ that offers you in the middle of instability, in the middle of all of this loss. It is the church of Jesus Christ that offers you your home. Even though you live as new Canadians, you are not exiles. We have a home. We have a place that we can run to where we can find protection, where we can find a sense of security, even when those that are close to us pass away, when, when things don't work out the way we planned. Uh, I'm, think, I'm, I'm reminded uh, several years ago, my mother passed away, and uh, I, that I was very fortunate that by that time our family was back in Canada, and I had the opportunity to be here to support my father, to be with my sister, and I can remember at that time when, when I you know, got up at the funeral and I had very deep emotions uh, stirring within me. And I looked down and the first three, we were at a big church uh, up in uh, North York and the church was packed with many, many people that I really didn't know that well. My mother's old friends, some that she went to school with. And, and, but I can remember looking down and, and seeing that there were a lot of people I didn't know. But the first three rows of the church that we were in were filled with people from my church. And it was those people that were giving me comfort and support through this time. I, I, I do believe that even as we deal with you know, these kind of uh, uh, challenges in our lives, we have this assurance that God is an ever-present help in times of trouble. I, I deeply regret that I never got to know uh, Eve's uh, extended family and so... Uh, so disappointed that I did not get to know his father. I, I've heard stories. Uh, I've heard stories and it's, uh, it sounds like it has been my loss. But at the same time, I am so grateful that God has given him, Eve and his family the opportunity to be here and to be with us. <coughs> For each one of us, when we lose someone close, there are elements of, of pain that no one else can understand. Uh, even when my mother passed away, I can remember speaking to my sister, and she, it was just my sister and myself, we were the only two siblings, and her and I were going through quite different, quite different experiences in our grief, because my, my sister had her own very special relationship with my mother, and so did I, and even though we'd lost the same person, our experience of losing her was completely different. And so right now, as each of us go through a time of loss, none of us right now can really understand the pain of Eve and each one of his brothers and sisters, of his mother. That relationship was something that was unique. So we do the best we can. But more than anything, what we can do at a time like this, the number one thing we can do is that we can point him to God because God is one who knows every detail of the pain. He knows every need that the family has right now. And as we move forward, our eyes must be confidently resting on Him, recognizing that this is a very difficult time. Recognizing that, yeah, it feels like, <clears throat> you know, it feels like the wind is blowing. It feels like the rain is pouring down. But we have a God who is an ever-present help in time of trouble. He is our fortress. And so we run to him tonight. I, I hope I'm going to pronounce his name right. Please forgive me. But General Tonda Afonso Castro. Oh, I almost got it, didn't I? General Tonga Afonso Tonta. Ah, that's what I mean. I'm sorry. I do apologize. I don't like doing that. General Tonta Afonso Castro. Uh, a man with a wonderful reputation, a man who raised a wonderful family. He leaves behind a strong legacy for which we are so grateful. But right now, my focus, my purpose in being here is that I really want to extend 
my deepest condolences on behalf of myself, my family, and our church to, uh, uh, to Eve and his whole family. I know that for each one of us, this, these are things that we all face. And so sometimes it's losing someone that's close to us. Sometimes it's not getting the job that we were hoping to get. Sometimes it's not finding out that Canada had what we were expecting. Sometimes things haven't worked out the way we planned. All of us have one thing in common. We have all had our hearts broken at one time or another. And here's one promise I can tell you. Life is difficult. We will continue to find those times where things just don't work out the way we planned. We will continue to lose those that we love. We will continue to get our hearts broken time and time again. And I want to encourage you tonight. This doesn't sound encouraging, but I'm hoping to be encouraging tonight to you that for every one of us that face those times, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid of those times. It's not that we welcome them, but we don't need to, we, we don't go looking for difficult times, but we don't run from them either. These are times when we can look with confidence to a God who is our fortress. He is a stronghold. He is ever present. And we want him to be our focus right now. And for Eve and for his family, that's what I would like to pray for right now. Can I pray with you? Let's pray together. Father, we pause right now and recognize that you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You have everything under your control. Father, we are so grateful that you are a God who loves us dearly. You knew General Tonta Alfonso Castro. You knew every single thing about him. The hairs on his head were numbered. And we know, Lord, that you have taken him now to be with you. And we are so grateful for the memory, for the legacy he left behind. Right now, Lord, I want to pray for the family. I want to pray for those that are dealing with this deep, profound sense of loss. I pray, Lord, that you would be their comfort right now. We are thankful for the memories. We're thankful for friends that can offer us comfort. We're thankful for uh, all of the lessons that have been passed down to us. We, there are so many things that we're grateful for, Lord, but sometimes those things do not take care of the pain. Those things do not fill those empty places that have been left in our heart when we lose those that are close to us. Those things, Lord, you know, can, can be such a comfort, but other times there are, there are deep, deep, uh, there's deep, deep grief in our heart, and sometimes we don't know what to do. Lord, I pray for every single person here, whether it's someone that we've lost that is close to us, or whether it's, whether it's some other plans that have really caused us to, to be so discouraged. I pray right now, Lord, for anyone that's discouraged in any way, for any grief that anyone is dealing with right now, that you would be the God we would turn to. Your ever-present help. You are a fortress, one that can protect us, can provide for us, even in these dark times. And so, Father, I, I, I pray for Lucas. I pray for uh, Solange. I pray for all of the boys as well, Lord, that you would bless them. I pray for all of my brothers and sisters that are here today. Those that have, you know, we're not born in this land, but we are so grateful for them being here. Father, I want to pray your blessing upon them as well. And right now, they might be feeling the miles. They might be really feeling the distance from those that they love. I pray that you would be their comfort right now, Lord. An ever-present help, in time, an ever-present comfort for them, even in these times when, when they're, they feel very far from home. I pray, Lord, that you would be their home, that they would just be filled with a sense of your power and presence, and that would offer them healing right now. Father, we, we pause and we want to pray also for the family back in Angola. I want to pray for them there as they deal with this time of loss. For uh, uh, Eve's mother, I want to pray for her. And I want to pray for their landlord as they continue to, to grow as a nation. And we pray for peace and prosperity there as well. And for right now, Lord... We are so grateful we can turn to you. We thank you for your ever-present help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, I do wish you all very well. And, uh, and, and uh, I just...